devils and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Feli, I'm originally from Munich, Germany and that's where we are right now. This is Ben so, and we're about to head out to Oktoberfest to Ben's very first time of yes, at Oktoberfest. Decent. I'm very excited, got my jacket, <laughs> got my little hose in. This was the very first day of Oktoberfest, but because I had been working that whole day, it was already around 9 p.m. when we went, and most of Oktoberfest actually shuts down at around 11, but we still wanted to go and walk around for a bit and maybe get a bite to eat. When we got there, I was actually surprised that it wasn't very crowded. As we know now, there were actually less visitors this year than usually, even though many people expected it to be extra busy after the pandemic. One reason for this might have been the weather. I heard that this was the worst Oktoberfest weather in decades. It was mostly cold and rainy. Right after we walked onto the festival grounds, we saw something I had never seen before. A guy in a lederhosen doing push-ups over a Moskrug. It actually fit in. Since it was less busy than anticipated, we actually just walked right into a beer tent, found a seat, and enjoyed our night. This steak sandwich, holy shit, it's good. This is one beer, well, one liter in. Not one beer, one liter. Okay, we made it to the S1. Very wet. I have my... Fake Fanta? Fake Fanta. <laughs> we'll see how it is. But here's looking rather shabby. Waiting on the S1. Yeah. To go back. Okay, so I know that it was just a couple hours that first night, but mm -hmm. what were your first impressions of Oktoberfest that night? They were good. I'll yeah. get more into the good stuff here in a little bit, but I will admit I was very culture shocked. We showed up so late in the day that everyone that was there already had two, if not three, if not four liters in them. Oh yeah. A lot of people had been there since the morning. Like people got up at 5 a.m. that day yeah. to like go to Oktoberfest, go to the festival grounds, line up, then wait in the tents until noon to get their first beer. Yeah. And then like they didn't eat anything beforehand. So yeah. And we were like <laughs> at your house. I was on Twitter just looking at videos and I saw videos videos of like news channels in yeah. Munich where people were like sprinting yeah. into the festival, festival grounds. grounds. Yeah, that's normal <laughs> on yeah. the first day. Yeah. <laughs> but once I had like a liter in me, I loosened up a pretty <laughs> a good amount. A liter of beer. Yeah, a liter of beer. <laughs> Which that's all we had that night though. Yeah. One liter one, of beer each. One liter. Yeah. And once I loosened up, it really was cool. Like once you're <laughs> like in the tent, you start to realize where you're at. It's just one big party. Like the smell of spilt beer on the ground, people being like extremely nice. Everywhere you look, people are giving hugs, people are falling off the benches, which that's a whole thing, apparently. Yeah, um, I mean, at nights, yeah. Yeah. I mean, all throughout the day, but yeah. I think that first night it happened, especially yeah. much. I will say this though, that Haka, mm -hmm. that ended up being my favorite tent out yeah. of all of them because of just the decoration in it. It's very well like painted everywhere. Yeah. And then it has a sky painted up top, which isn't there like some kind of... Well, it says like Himmel der Bayern, yeah. so sky of Bavarians. Yeah. And Himmel in German also means heaven at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of has a double meaning. But yeah, that's my favorite tent. That's why we went in there. That was like my first thing. Let's see if there's a spot in that tent. Because yeah, that's and I one. thought it was packed that night. And yeah, well, you it were... was difficult to go through the <laughs> It was, aisles. it yeah. was, but compared to other nights, yeah. It was what empty. I would soon find out, it is that was tame. Yeah, I mean the tent was still open and everything, yeah. and we just we got just a walked spot. right in. I was like, yeah. this isn't that hard. Yeah, that was very wrong. I'll yeah. just put it that way. Yeah, but I think it was really funny for me that you said that was the first time that you've had real culture shock. Yeah, like you didn't have culture shock like that the first time you came to Germany. I don't even think you had culture shock like that when we went to Italy. No, and I didn't expect it because I thought I prepared you pretty well. Yeah, no, you, you did, <laughs> but it, I think it's just one of those things you can read as many things on it, you can watch as many videos on the internet about it, but until you're there, yeah. the scale of it, and then just the stuff that's going on around you, it's amazing, like, it's it, it, it no video prepares you for it, no book prepares yeah. you for it. But and I think it's also always difficult to be sober when everyone else is drunk. Yeah, there's definitely, <laughs> like, as soon as, as soon as I was there, I was like, alright, I want a beer, which... Good. 
<laughs> yeah. Good. Well, good. you already talked about fast beer before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I learned my lesson that time, so. Yeah, it's like about 6% alcohol yeah, I usually. I knew what to expect. Yeah. By the way, guys, we also filmed this clip at Oktoberfest. It's cold! If you haven't seen it yet, I posted this on Instagram, but also here as a YouTube short. And it's my take on the corn song, <laughs> which is this song or audio that went super viral recently. And yeah, I made an Oktoberfest version of it. And if you look really closely, you can see that in some of these clips, I have my Raycon earbuds in so that I can hear the song that I'm lip syncing to. And as you know, I've partnered with Raycon, which means that you guys get 50% off your Raycon purchase. I have the Everyday Earbuds by Raycon. And as the name says, they're perfect to accompany you through your everyday life, whether you're out for a run, at the store, doing household things, or just wanna listen to a podcast in bed at night. Trust me, these are going to be your best friends. They come with four different sizes of gel tips so that you can adjust them to your ear size. I always use the smallest gel tips and they're just so comfortable. They don't hurt your ears, even if you wear them hours at a time. The battery life is amazing too. They have a playtime of eight hours and then you can just put them back into the case to charge them and the battery life of the case is 32 hours. You can also walk up to 33 feet, which is 10 meters away from your phone and still have perfect quality. They have a built-in mic for calls, they're water resistant, and of course, my favorite part, they don't fall out of your ears no matter what you do. I mean, I even walked through the crowds at Oktoberfest with these and I didn't have to worry about them falling out when people bump into me or when I smile real big because yes, earbuds in the past have fallen out when I smile and <laughs> have a lot of facial movement going on for real. <laughs> Same with sunglasses, they move up here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can smile with these, I can talk, I can do all kinds of things. Um, people bump into me like yeah. that and they stay. And the case is super small and practical too. I just had them in my dandel pocket all day with my phone and my money and I didn't even notice that they were there really. So if you would like to get a pair yourself, as I said, you can get 15% off your Raycon purchase. All you have to do is go to buyraycon.com slash Germany or simply click on the link in the info box below. Okay, so after that first night, we went again the next day, right? Um, yes. On Sunday on the first weekend, then we went to Italy and Greece and then yes. we came back and we went again for two days on the last weekend of Oktoberfest. Last day. <laughs> you ready? Four. 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 That's what the German police says. We want you to have a great time, have fun, be safe and go, come back safely. So we went there for four days in total and I think you really got a lot of exposure to Oktoberfest yes. during those days because we went several times. We went at night, during the day, in different weather. I mean, most of it was shitty weather, but like the last yeah. day was good weather. Yeah. Um, we went to the beer garden, inside the tent, walked around it, like all the different things. So maybe you can just describe for the viewers how your Oktoberfest experience was, um, which things stood out to you, what you liked, what you didn't like. Okay, so just some like overarching things, like the scale of everything. Thing. Yeah. And she told me about it before and I didn't, I kind of was like, okay. Then I saw it in person and wild. Number two, the social aspect of it. It's no secret, Germans for the most part, they're not big small talk on small talk and like, pointless conversation, yeah. but whenever you're standing on a table in a lederhosen and it doesn't really matter what language you speak, you're gonna find a conversation somewhere. Like I, for example, we just happened on this table yeah. and met a guy right next to me that was an American football player yeah. that's playing football in well, Finland. The whole table was full of Americans. Yeah, they were all They were full all of Americans. Americans from different parts yeah. of the country. Yeah. And then, yeah, the one guy that you ended up talking to. Yeah, Colby. Was. Shout out Colby. He was really cool. <laughs> but no, even that first night, we just happened on some Germans that we just started talking to. It happened yeah. every night. Yeah, that's like, just what you do. That's how, like, finding a table goes. I think I explained that in my first Oktoberfest video. You just, if you don't have a reservation, which reservations are a whole other thing, watch that video if yeah. you want to learn more about that. But um, if the tents are open, which that's the first thing, sometimes they close if they're overcrowded. But if they're open, you can go in, and then it usually will still look like there is no spot anywhere. But those um, beer benches, Bietische, can fit 10 people 
per table. And what you do usually is just like see how many people are sitting there and then you just look, walk up to every table and ask if they still have yeah. any space. So it's not like one group of people gets to have a whole table to themselves. It's like yeah. natural for these kinds of events, even at beer gardens in Germany, that you share these tables. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I even saw waiters like telling people like, no, you have to share yeah. the table. Yeah. Like they were moving people <laughs> in. Yeah. But whenever we had to find a table, I left that up to her because she's just very I'm the good pro at that. <laughs> but also yeah. Yeah, the local I guess so yeah. like if you speak to German and yeah. and they're Germans it's more likely for them yeah, to, say to say yes, yes. I think yeah. but yeah basically every time you share the table with people you talk to them yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you don't have anything in common and like yeah. especially if it's earlier in the day and maybe you don't really get into a conversation but most of the time I think you just yeah. talk to people we also met a lot of Italians a Which, lot. even though it a was lot. an Italian weekend, um, the second weekend of Oktoberfest is usually Italiana Wochenende, where a lot of Italians are there. This was, I think, the third weekend that we met a few. It was funny because we had just returned from Italy. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> and, you know, they went hard. We'll just say that. Yeah. But even though it's kind of guaranteed that you'll happen into conversations or, like, just social interactions at Oktoberfest. I would say that like bringing friends and going in a group, you know, it's just more fun experiencing yeah. the tent with like friends and people that you know and singing along with them and yeah. you know. It's Another thing about tents it would be the food. The food, I had the half chicken. Yeah. Twice. And it was very good. The Hindle. Yes. <laughs> Say again. Ein halbes. 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 Yes. There was like all kinds of food that you could get in the tents. I will say it was like... Like sit down. It's like a menu. Yeah. So it's, it's just, just a, like a restaurant basically. Yeah. The they same people serve, that bring you beer. Yeah. They serve the beer and yeah. then they serve food as well. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, the chicken was amazing. It also mm -hmm. came with potato salad and that was to die for. <laughs> it was really, really good. But you could get any type of like... Not every type of traditional yeah, meal, but, but no, a lot of traditional... The, I mean, there's different tents. There's like 16 different tents, big tents, and they all have their own menu, right? So yeah. like they're run by different breweries, by the big Munich breweries, and it really depends on what their menu is, of course, but most of them, I think, have a really big menu. And what was also really special this year is that I think all tents this year had vegan options. Don't quote me on this, maybe it wasn't all tents, but I know it was like something that people talked about a lot because there was like a vegan Weisswurst in yeah. some of the tents, I know, and like you could have it, vegan I, options everywhere. I saw it on the menus, for the sure. The vegan Weisswurst, yeah. yeah. But also they had other vegan food and vegetarian food has always been part of Bavarian cuisine as well. Like my go-to was always like Käsespätzle, but you'll also find stuff like uh, Ramschwammer with Knödel, so like the dumplings with the creamy mushrooms. Josh had that. Yeah. Yeah. And even though the beer is, people complain about the prices of the beer at oh, yeah, Oktoberfest, because sure. I guess it keeps on going up, right? Oh yeah, and like compared to other Volksfeste in Bavaria, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. I mean, you pay like about 15, with tip, 15 euros for one liter of beer yeah. now, which like when I was young, um, 16 or so, it would be 10 euros with tip. And like now, I think the price is at like 13 something yeah. is the yeah. price. And then you add that tip. So you basically pay 15 per well, beer. Well, any sports fan in America knows the pain of paying that for a beer because that's what it is for any beer. For a liter? And, uh, no, it's honestly pretty, probably less. At like a Major League Baseball game. Okay. It costs like 12.50. For like a can, a tall can. So a uh, third liter <laughs> or yeah, like a half basically. liter. Like, a tall can is I think a half liter maybe. It might be, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> but even though like the beer is like a little bit pricey, even for us dumb Americans that like, will spend anything on a beer, the food's not that bad price-wise. It's really oh, yeah, not. No. I saw it on one of the menus, I really wanted to get it, but I think I needed some carbs in me. I saw a tomahawk steak yeah. for like... $25. Okay. Which, in comparison to here, that is extremely cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I would say that the menu inside the tents is usually a little bit more pricey compared to your standard Bavarian restaurant. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's just normal because it's at Oktoberfest. So it's not like 
super cheap for German prices. I think it's pretty average for German. Yeah. Like it's more like average to high yeah. for German prices, but I guess for American yeah, well, prices, I mean, it's kind like, of cheap. <laughs> I, that's one thing I do love about Germany in general. Is that and it, Europe in, in general. In Europe in general, yeah. Is that, is the, that price the food, of food is, is yeah. just cheap to go eat out and to go to the grocery store. Yeah. I don't know about right now with everything going on. No, but, groceries are still yeah. much cheaper than here, but I mean, this isn't the topic, but like a pizza margarita in Rome, in like one of the main spots of Rome, like close to the Colosseum is like seven euros. Yeah. And that's normal. Or like a spaghetti carbonara was like what? Oh, it was like 12 or twelve so? dollars, yeah. if that. And it was... And or less sometimes. Yeah. Amazing. Like yeah. some of the best food I've ever had. But, <laughs> okay, but back to October. Yes, <laughs> to digress. The food outside at the stands is really, 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 really good too. Yeah, it's, that's more like to-go food, like yeah. sandwiches and you know, you get all your sweet stuff like chocolate covered fruits and roasted almonds, but yes. yeah, lots of sandwiches, definitely lots of meat, but also lots of vegan mm -hmm. options. I had a really, really good vegan Leberkäse, yeah. which I don't, still don't really know what Leberkäse is in English. I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> um, they also have like Käsespätzle out there yeah. as well. They have lots of Ox, which yeah, shocked ox, you a lot. that shocked me. <laughs> There's like whole stands. belongs to the Ochsenbraterei, which is 110. Okay, yes. I that saw that with like the rotating. spinning, rotating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was an interesting one. Yeah. Which talking about, I want to go back to something real quick. Okay. Those are not tents. Yeah. <laughs> They're not tents. And I knew they weren't tents, but they are full-blown buildings. There's yes. like columns in there that are, are wood. And they have like second stories. They are full-blown buildings. Yes. And... <laughs> I don't know how long it takes to put those things up. Months. Okay. They start in June or July sense. usually. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because it was not a tent. No. At <laughs> all. Now, at the food tents outside where the stands and the, stuff the are. Booths, the yeah. booths. We got you the roasted almonds yes. at one point. Yes. And those were really, really good. Yeah. Uh, that's like a, we have those a lot here in the yeah. U.S. too, at like carnivals and stuff. Yeah. Of course, you also have cotton candy, which is also a thing in the U.S., but yeah, just yeah. the typical carnival food yeah. kind of exists at Oktoberfest. But like we said earlier with the ox, there is some like things as an American that kind of are curveball thrown at you, like a half a meter bratwurst. <laughs> yeah. You just see some like <laughs> little kid walking around with a half meter bratwurst it's the size of like his arm, and you're like... It's really funny, too, because the bread isn't big enough for it. They always put, like, this half meter of bratwurst in, like, this normal-sized bun. bun. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to eat, it's mostly the big bratwurst yeah. in half bun. It's, yeah. It makes no sense. Well, it does make perfect sense in a place like that. <laughs> in any other context, people would be like, <laughs> look at this guy. I will say, though, even the food at the booths is pretty cheap. You had, like, a steak sandwich, for yes. example, steak yes. sandwich. Holy shit, it's good. It was like 650 or so. Yeah, I'm very happy I got that because that kind of opened my taste buds up to try to get some more stuff at the stands. Which yeah. You had a lot. You also had yeah. schnitzel, Zemme, which yep. obviously you love schnitzel. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, I know you had several of those steaks. I mean, I yeah, think I had, were, yeah, I had. I was double fisting the <laughs> schnitzel sandwich and the steak sandwich yeah. at one point, and it was very good. One thing that you said also shocked you was the fish, right? Yeah, the fish. Uh, I didn't try any. Yeah. But, and I know they, some people do this here in the U.S. too, but they had sandwiches that had the scales still on the fillets. Mm -hmm. And then also they had sandwiches with the whole fish, yeah. it looked like. And I, well, they have Stecker fish, which is literally a full fish on a stick. Okay, of. yeah, that might have been but. what I saw. <laughs> I was like, Interesting. Not knocking it, but interesting. Yeah. I would probably try it one day. Yeah, I can't really um, say anything to it because I've never had it in my yeah, life. Cause I mean, I, don't eat any animals. But <laughs> I want to try. I'll, I'll I'll do the, do it for the both of us. Okay. I want to try stuff like that. There's really all kinds of food. I mean, mostly Bavarian, but also some other cuisines come in there as well. There's a lot of pastries stuff like that. Yeah, also pastries, pastries and yeah. crepes. And, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Lots of crepes and yeah. like langos. Is there waffle things? Like I thought yeah, I, saw I think waffles. so. Yeah. yeah. While we're on like the topic of food again i've only been to one place that does this same exact thing where it kind of bombards all five of your senses yeah uh the smell like with the food the sound with like the music and the I sound of the rides and uh all this stuff and then the sight all the lights and you know the trucks and even touch like people bumping into you the touch of like the beer stein the only place i've ever seen like that is disney world yeah. and oktoberfest in munich was sort of like that and especially whenever you're a leader or two in then your senses are tingling and it's all becomes more and more fun but it even does it like 
It even does it while you're sober. Yeah. That's why I always loved it as a kid. Yeah. Because, like, obviously, we didn't even really go into the beer yeah. tents when I was a kid. Like, maybe once or twice for, like, when the whole family went there. Because that's also a thing. Families go there. I don't know if that was something that shocked you. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I yeah. I didn't, I didn't but, even really say that earlier. That really <laughs> shocked me. Because, like, even late at night, whenever everybody's very, you know, drunk, yeah. uh, you'll see, like, little kids, like, on their dad's shoulders walking around. I mean, they're, for the most part, doing, like, the rides and all that stuff. Yeah. And, but uh, also, they'll also take them into the beer tents. And like yeah. especially during the day, um, you'll see a lot of families inside the beer tents and in the beer gardens as well, which I think we haven't really explained yet that the tents also usually have an outdoor area, basically, yeah. like the outdoor part of the beer tent is the beer garden. Yeah. Um, and then there's also beer gardens that don't belong to one of the major tents. So like, yeah, there's also a bunch of uh, spots where you can sit outside and you'll kind of hear the music a little bit usually, yeah. but it's really not that loud. So it's more like a spot where you can hang out, Gemütlich, as we would say, like in a cozy way. It's not just like hardcore party right away. Yeah, it's no. more like you can hang out, you can talk. Um, and but that's also where a lot of families go. It was go. a nice place to go whenever we couldn't get into a tent, for example. Yeah. We also went out there. I Which got... sometimes the beer rents are full too, but yeah. they weren't yeah. because the weather wasn't that great. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, sort of like Disney World and you know, the entertainment value of bombarding the senses. I mean, even though the rides aren't Disney quality, there's very few like that. The rides really shocked me yeah. at Oktoberfest in general because, for example, you have the pendulum swinging ones. Yeah. And that's... At, and I mean, big roller coasters. And big roller coasters. <laughs> I was going to get to that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you have these major amusement park rides, in my mind. They only belong, really, at amusement parks. Yeah. They're not carnival rides. We don't have those at carnivals here in the U.S. Not at this scale. These are yeah. ones that you see at big, big amusement parks here in the U.S. Yeah. And then, like you said, there's two or three roller coasters. Yeah, at least three. One yeah. of them has there's five flips. There's also an indoor one. Yeah. Five flips. <laughs> loops, yeah. Yeah, we'll loops. Flip. Yeah, flip, loop, yeah. whatever. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ben. How was the roller coaster? Rough. But right. good. Rough. Glad I didn't drink before. It wasn't rough, was no, it? Wasn't rough, but... <laughs> it was fun. Definitely a roller coaster. Yeah. Five loops. Yeah, Just five loops. Right? We're here. It's time yeah. to drink. And then everything for the kids, like you were just talking about, you know, like the classic carnival rides that go around in a circle. Then they have those like a step up where they're honestly insane. Like there's some that go up and down really fast. Some that like follow like a beat to a song. Yeah. Some that move <laughs> like, like with the G-forces going really, really fast. And yeah. then also, of course, you have the Captain Carousel that goes super, it's super high up in the air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there was one that is um, like, free fall like the free fall mm -hmm. tower. What was the other big roller coaster's name? A peanut bond or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. But it, th that was really, really big too. It went like yeah. 100, 100 or 200 feet in the air, yeah. which I'm the American <laughs> measuring in feet in Germany. But... Yeah, the rides were really, really cool. There was bumper cars, and there was all kinds of games, too. Oh, yeah. The games like, were really cool. Lots of the, like, shooting stands where you, yeah. of course, got to shoot. Because yeah. I was like, the one thing that, like, an American should be really good at. And the funny thing is, Josh, who you know from uh, the Understanding Train Station podcast, yeah. is the same way. Like, he's this American in Munich, and, like, every time he does the shooting thing, yeah. he's super good, and so were you. Yeah. Like, the person at the stand was very surprised. Well, was it Eine Schoss, Eine Rosa? <laughs> ein Schoss, Eine Rosa. Okay, yeah. Ein Schoss, Eine Rosa. So. One shot, one rose. Yes, <laughs> boom. And then um, you shot me like a lot of roses. <laughs> yeah, we ended up with like four or five. But, you know, talking about the rides and the games and all that stuff, there's also like these rides that we don't have here in the U.S. that, are they more Bavarian traditional games or? What do you mean? Teufelsrad? And yeah, Tupacan that's what and I, Stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they're just like old-fashioned attractions. Like before you had huge roller coasters, this yeah. is what they had so yeah. like yeah these are definitely old maybe I can look up how old these two are specifically because yeah. we did both of them yeah Teufelsrad and Tobogan yeah which are also considered kind of like Oktoberfest classics yeah. they also have like other really old rides at Oktoberfest as well um, but these two are still like party rides kind yeah of. people go there drunk and they love it oh yeah we did we did both of them the Tobogan is that what it is Tobogan yeah Tobogan it was really Really fun. That's where you go up with the conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah. And you have to try and balance it, it out. And I did it with help because there's like people who help you. Yeah, I <laughs> ended up almost falling. The key is don't hold on to the rail. That's a tip. Yeah. Uh, you get up, you go out, you go down on a slide, on and a it's slide. really fun. Yeah. But the highlight of all the rides for me 
was the Teufelsra. Yeah, the devil's wheel. Yeah, and it was so much fun. <laughs> The way it works is that you pay an entrance fee to yes. get inside into the arena, basically. You can kind of hear it from the outside, but you can't really see because they have the walls closed off. So you pay like, I think it's five euros to get into the arena. And then you can either be in the audience or you can also participate. And it's a spinning wheel mm -hmm. in the middle or yes. like a disc. I don't know how you would, yeah, it's a spinning disc yeah. in the middle. And what's really fun about it, most of it you couldn't really understand anyways, no. but the announcer is kind of like one of the funniest parts about it because it's like this super Bavarian dude that speaks Bavarian dialect and he basically announces who gets to go onto the spinning wheel next. Whenever the announcer calls out what the qualifications are for He'll this round. He'll say like all guys with short lederhosen or all Americans yeah. or all blonde girls or yeah. <laughs> yeah and everyone will go into the middle and the key is to get to the center because you sit down and it starts spinning yeah. and it's just a big dog pile in the yeah. middle yeah. and it starts spinning and spinning and it gets faster and faster and as soon as it starts to get pretty fast you just start seeing people fly off yeah. to the sides. The goal is to be the last one standing, <laughs> yes. but whenever there's two or three <laughs> or people left, they'll throw out these obstacles like this big ball and, and this some, rope and the rope and yeah. they'll try to hook you and uh, you know, people are cheering the whole time and it's really fun. And, yeah. Uh, they also play music in there. Yeah, that's so. uh, honestly a very big motivation for me to learn more German. Yeah, so that you understand. So that I understand <laughs> next time, and I'm just gonna go in full like. Because that was you wanted to go, <laughs> and then we were there for a while, and it was like at the end of the night though, like before they closed, and every qualification that they said didn't fit you. Yeah. And then there was only yeah. one time that you could have gone and it was when they said all guys yeah, with, with short Lederhosen and it took you a second to get the translation yeah. and then by the time that you knew it was already packed because all the guys had short Lederhosen. Yep. <laughs> Definitely gonna <laughs> so. learn that sentence before next year. <laughs> okay, so final question. Would you say that Oktoberfest in Munich was pretty much like most Americans picture it or was it completely different? No, I, I would say that most Americans that know halfway a little bit about like Oktoberfest, yeah, uh, it's what they would mostly expect. Okay, like I said, I think once you get there and actually experience it, yeah, it will be very, very shocking to yeah. you, no matter how much you were ready for it. Yeah, because you know you'll just see things that are you're not going to see it anywhere else. Like you'll see six, forty to fifty year old grown dads on a <laughs> Thursday night arms locked in with each other, swaying back and forth, <laughs> drunk all to hell, like having a great time. You don't see that a lot, at least here, and especially in Lederhosen. And you just gotta like, just have fun with everybody. Everyone's just trying to have a good time. In the so end. the answer is it's mostly what you expect. Yeah, I know that yeah. a lot of people, Americans, believe that Oktoberfest is kind of like a beer fair, and you can get like all these different types of beer yeah. And that's really not at all the case. Yeah. You can get lager and radler, which is lager yeah. with lemon soda. And then in some places you can get wine. And then in some places you can get Hefeweizen. And that's pretty much it. And then outside yeah. there's some carousels where you can have like shots and cocktails. But that's really not the main thing. If you go in, inside a tent, they'll ask you how many beers. And then you'll just say the number and you will get yeah. that many liters of lager beer. Yeah. Of that brewery that the tent belongs to. So I think that's something that I know a lot of people have a misconception. I of. honestly, <laughs> I forgot about that whenever we showed up, yeah. uh, like shortly. It wasn't like, like which I kind of to, beer like, do you want? Do you I had want to remind Dunkel myself. Or, yeah, no. I could just be like, one. Just what? And maybe like, <laughs> super. Yeah. <laughs> so <you're> good. <laughs> And this was the last night of Oktoberfest. Everyone was partying hard, including us. The waiters and waitresses started doing a conga line through the tent. I didn't film that, unfortunately. And the band said thank you for an amazing 17 days. Na, na, na.